Welcome to the 2008 World Juggling Federation Championships. I'm John Wee, and I'm joined by Owen Morse and Jason Garfield. Today, we're starting off coverage of the overall championship with the advanced ring competition, and then following up with coverage of the advanced ball competition. Gentlemen, welcome to the 2008 WJF Overall Championship. Thank you so much. This is absolutely amazing. Over 35 competitors from all over the world, all in one place for one week of competitions, exhibitions, and workshops. This is truly an amazing event. It's the only one of its kind in the world. And with so many competitors, the vibe I feel as I walk backstage is that of a mutually reciprocated intimidation. I think this is going to be a battle of who's the least concerned with what everyone else is doing. Any of these competitors could win, it's just a matter of who performs their best and the pressure of competition has caused many a would-be champion to not would-be a champion so much. The rules are simple. First, you must wear your uniform, including shoes and socks. You must have original music that you've obtained the rights to use, and you must submit your routine form by the deadline, which this year was December 1st. Now, competitors have three minutes to execute their most difficult moves and attempt to connect as many of them together as possible. The ball competition starts out at a minimum of five balls, no less. The ring competition starts out at a minimum of five rings, no less. And the club competition starts out at a minimum of four clubs, no less. Some moves score bonus points for extended runs, and some moves are awarded bonus points for connecting to other moves. Similar moves, such as shower patterns connected to other shower patterns, get no connection points because they are easy to connect. The more dissimilar the connected moves are, the more connection bonus points you'll get for them. In other words, don't try to cheat by making easy connections. You won't get points for that. And don't even think about using setup throws. A setup throw will break any connection and you will not get any connection points. A setup throw is any throw in between two moves that is not part of either move. It makes it easier to pretend to connect the moves together, but the very act of using a setup throw invalidates any chance of a connection. And we're watching for that. So we'll know when you do it. Deductions are given for moving the feet, collisions, aborts, drops, and falling down. Anything that demonstrates the competitors are not in control of their moves or patterns. Two separate panels of judges are present at WJF5, one to validate the planned moves and connections, and the other to do nothing but count up the deductions. We're going to get started with our first ring competitor from Germany, Thomas Dietz. Thomas is the only competitor to wear gloves while uh, juggling rings. Rings beat up your hands. Hey, you know, for those of you watching, don't juggle rings. You may not realize, but they, they give you a lot of cracks, cuts. A lot of that has to do with how you're catching them, though. If you uh, throw too far behind you, sl they slam into your hands, and that's where a lot of the injury comes from. If you catch them right in front of you and only need to slow them down, not also having to reposition from behind you, then you can minimize and even prevent any injury. But uh, first year he's using gloves also. Uh, 
Oh, that's a nice 720. Three up, five. And there's the, the pull down and the finger point, which gets no points. And why he does the pull down. I know why he does the finger point. Oh, I think I think he needs to wear thicker clothing. I think he needs to stop wondering if he left the iron on. That was not intentional. No, he stopped somewhere in the middle there and uh, almost chopped off his shoulder there. Nice transition from a 4-up async 360 into a 7-5, which is a high-low crossing pattern. And back. Every time these patterns change, they are, they are connections. So he's going from a crossing pattern into sync. Two connected 4-up sync 360s. Doesn't qualify the pattern after the second 360, only gets eight throws. He needed 12 to qualify, and that means he does get points for the first 360 since the four throws of the second 360 added together with the eight throws after the second 360 give him the sixth ring qualification he needed for one 360. In other words, he gets points for only one of those 360s, not the connection and not the second one. On to seven rings. Yeah, you know, as he's walking backwards, that's probably why he's wearing the gloves now, because all of those <laughs> all of those rings used to slam right into his hands and cut him up. Those are the throws that hurt. And we'll look at where he is on the stage now. He started yeah. off toward the right, now he's way back. If, if it were a bigger stage, he could have gone forever. <laughs> Circle the world. We just need a smaller stage, and then we'll teach them to stand in one spot. 8x6. Wow. I believe that was a bonus qualified. Uh, twice as many catches as he needed to. There we go. Same problem here again. Thomas either can't count or never read the rules. Uh, exact same wrong number of throws after the second 180, so only gets points for the first 180, not the second one or any connection. This is the 8x6. 7 ring 8x6. He does bounce in it's, this pattern as well. He's a big bouncer. Yeah. He's almost airborne. All right, let's see what happened here. He spins around almost oh. to 540, uh, then says, I've got an itch on my back. Maybe the rings can take care of that for me. I don't know what that, it probably just didn't look set up right and changed his mind. Well, what can you do when you're halfway <laughs> spun around? I mean, you've got to commit to it and deal with the, it's going to drop anyway. You're certainly not in a better position to catch them when your back is facing the rings. Duck and cover works, doesn't it? Yeah. Thomas Dietz scored a 7.1. And up next from Wales is Toby Walker. Starting off with two connected 3-up 180s, connected to a 3-up 360, connected to 744. Yeah, another uh, back walker. No uh, pun I didn't mean that. A uh, Toby Walker. He's just walking backwards a, a lot when uh, when he's doing these high throws. That's just a, a result of holding on to them too long, not letting go soon enough. Pancake throws. Those are so difficult to do. Is, is pancakes an official WJF terminology? Are we? Uh... The passing zone pancake works for me. <laughs> Overhead throws. So overhead throw 360. Now that wouldn't have been a valid connection because there's a basic throw after that 360. Just uh, one basic throw. You do, that's all yeah. it takes. There have to be no basic throws in between. And just because you're doing a one-handed move doesn't mean that the other hand is now part of that move. Half shower, for example, it's just a one-handed move. The other throw is just a basic throw. Two stage 720 to a collect. Just gonna have to try that again to get any points. And he does qualify. Qualifies it, uh, and then some. Uh, only because oh. he had more to do. Oh, 720. <laughs> and then did not qualify oh. the 7C because he was done there, and now he's going into a different pattern. That's so he's, a shame. He's not counting. Yeah, and again, it's not a question of uh, is it, ability. Is it forgetting to count, or is it just... I mean, surely he knows that he should, right? After competing this many times, <laughs> you would think 
but uh, I don't know. It's it's possible that he's he's also fighting the time limit, so he's yeah. A lot of people let's, rush. Let's move along to the next uh, routine. Well, if that's the case, then just don't even do it in the first place because you're getting the same amount of points. Nice six ring pattern from here, though. They're, uh, they're not hitting each other. Yeah, a little wobbly. Yeah, a little correction there. Yeah. Four up, three sixty in sync attempt. How does a ring around the wrist that's clearly a mistake compare to a ring on the floor? It's uh, not as bad. Uh, drops are uh, falling down is the worst deduction you can get. Just short of that is a drop, and then anything other than that are one, two, or three point deductions. It's a, it's a mistake, but not a drop. Right. It's the, it's the equivalent to an abort, I suppose. Oh, and runs out of time. Those nice pancake throws. Even from the side, though, you can see that those are. Eh, except that last one was a little wobbly, but uh, very nice flips on those. It's hard to flip rings, and they don't want to go that way. No. I call them uh, flapjack throws. Can you do, do you that. Pass them some flapjacks. <laughs> flapjacks. That's how. It, I don't know how long he's been juggling rings, but uh, it's the first time we've seen it. So yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. I've noticed a number of competitors this year uh, juggling props that I haven't seen them doing previous years. Is that your encouragement to them, or is that all their decision? Well, the encouragement is in the overall championship because that's made up of 25 different competitions that cover balls, clubs, and rings. So it's, if they want to sure. win, it's in their best interest to do all three, certainly, and all 25 competitions because that all adds up. It's accumulative. Well, it is nice to see it. It makes everyone a little more well-rounded. Toby Walker scores a 3.8, and coming up next is Bova Galchenko, born in Russia, now living it up in California, but uh, not in a blow kind of way, more like a Annie kind of way. You remember Annie, Daddy Warbucks, you know. Yeah, well, Daddy Warbucks did blow. I did not know a that. A little known fact. Yeah. As little as uh, Vova's juggled balls, he's been juggling rings uh, an even shorter amount of time. But he's, uh, he's got all the basics down. He's transferred all of his ball skill over to the rings. He's got all the 180s, the 360s. Yeah, it's just interesting to see because I've seen, I've seen him juggle hundreds of hours, but I've never seen him juggle rings. You notice the form is almost identical, though. Yes. He looks almost yeah. the same. On that 97531, oh. he's, he drops on the hand across. It's an, it, that's that. awkward yep, to that's do with rings. Yep, yep, try doing a shower pattern with rings. It's weird. He can throw and catch anything, but don't try to hand him something. <laughs> 9720. Okay. Trying a uh, two-stage 720, three up two-stage 720. Not a lot of people will notice the difference between that two stage 720 and the five up two right. stage 720, but yeah. there is a huge difference. Yeah, I noticed. Okay, good. Reverse cascade to a pull down. Yeah, no points for that pull down though. You only get points for pull downs if there's a pancake flip neck catch, and that pancake has to be thrown at the latest before the last three rings are pulled down and then caught around the neck at the very end. It all works out to make it more difficult. For I you. see. It sounds that way. So you're saying doing it the easy way doesn't count? No. So doing it the way I would do it doesn't count. No, I've, I've, I've looked into all the loopholes for all the ways you can do these moves to make it easier, and I've removed those from the possibility of getting any points. I see. Yet another reason I am behind the microphone and not on the stage. There, there that's the one I'm talking about. That's, that's, that's oh, you see, oh, it's hard. See, so he didn't get points for that one either. Even a Russian. <laughs> Even a Russian. And the Russians yeah, like the rings. He's going to try it again, Even isn't he? this Russian. Yeah, let's see. So... Uh, Hold that. He's walking around a little bit. 
Might need some gloves soon. Oh, he's doing a six up. Oh. Uh, six up async 360. Okay. He's checking the time. Yeah. Right again. Yep. Three, four, five, six. Up. Hello. Async. Three in each hand. All up. Async. One, two, three. Where's four. that? Okay, pancake. There we go. That's the bare minimum you could do for getting pull down points. A super pancake pull down would have been the first throw as a pancake, then all five rings pulled down, and then ending with a pancake neck catch thrown at the beginning. Oh, uh, he had more. He had more to do. Yeah, the three minute time limit is uh, really stressful for him. But there it is again, that six up. Point four for Vova Galchenko. That's not going to help him much in his overall score. And that puts him behind Thomas and Toby in the ring competition. We'll be back with more from the 2008 World Juggling Federation Championships after this. Welcome back to the 2008 World Juggling Federation Championships. We're continuing with the 2008 WJF Advanced Ring Competition. As far as I'm concerned, Arash is king of the 540s and 540 connections. You'll see this in his routine, all of his routines. Uh, a 540 is basically a 360 seamlessly connected to a 180. This is the math you were afraid of, but I'll, I'll take care of it. No, I got it. I follow you. Okay. You, you could say one and a half spins, leave the math out of it. Uh, Arash's specialty is rings. I think he, uh, he likes rings, which is rare. Uh, most people don't like rings. Uh, Arash and Sergey seem to favor rings over the other two props. His pattern seems slightly higher than. Uh, you mean where the uh, the objects peak? Yes. The peaking, yeah. And it could be a function of him catching at shoulder level. That was a nice transition there in yeah. the half shower. And his half shower patterns are a little different. They're more in sync than anybody anybody else's. Uh, most people you see like the high throw, then the low throw. His right. are together. At the his same high time. throw is slightly higher, so I think that's where it's that's absorbing yeah. that time there. Yeah. Although it doesn't seem to start out that way, which is interesting. It seems to be three or four throws before it gets into that sync pattern. Oh, wow. That was a quick uh, 180 there. That was linked. They were almost the same height, so it seems like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right, Those they're high enough to throw in a 180 or a 360 if you want to. They don't need to go much higher. Yeah, yeah and some people do the 180 almost by turning and backing under the pattern. There's that yeah, 540. Yeah. yeah, there it is again. Ring patterns look best uh, when viewed from the side. Uh, and that 540 is really beautiful. Yeah, a few of the sight swaps you want to see from the front, just so you know what the pattern is, because from the side you can't see patterns, but they're so much more visual from the side. That is actually a problem that the competitors may run into. If you're doing a uh, 6x4 connected to a 4-6x from the side, it looks almost identical. It, it is yeah. identical from, yeah, the side. from the side, so if you're not yeah, showing the, the judges, judges that, yeah, they won't give you any connection points if they can't see it. There's that two stage again yep. he did with the balls. Yeah. Five up 180 connected to a three up 540. Yeah. Um, I think he could probably do that if he tried it again. Five up 180, three up 540, and qualifies the pattern. Still going, another three up 360 yeah. connected to a half shower. Very nice full reverse cascade. Yeah, he's solid with those. Moving on to the six ring routine, starting off in sync. And the yeah. fist bump. <laughs> the fist bump. Says, I'm done, I did okay, I'm out of here. Let's see, here's that connection sequence. Five up, 180. Three up, 540. Look at his feet, look, they just stay right there. Yeah. Just barely a little bit of moving. 
we have 360 connected to the half shower and sink. Arash Farhang scores a 5.1, putting him ahead of Vova and Toby, but our final competitor is from Russia, and his name is Sergei Ignatov Jr. This is his prop, isn't it? This is the only one he does. Uh, rings is his specialty. He has a couple of new connections uh, this year, I think. And this under the arm move is fairly unique. You don't see that by too many people. And uh, I believe, doesn't he even do back, ring back crosses? Yeah, well those are shoulder throws. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he, uh, he does do back crosses as well. Now he's got a style where he's in constant motion with his feet. Now is that going yeah. to cause some deductions? Uh, yeah, uh, every, no, no matter how insignificant it may appear to be, every move of the foot, and there's a lot of them there, they all add up. Um, it's interesting. I mean, for some people, that's a, a choice. You know, I think he almost, almost deliberately steps on every throw, just rocks his body back and forth. I don't think it's an in intentional. I think it may be embedded into his technique. Yeah. Yes. He's learned how to keep the patterns going by walking around as opposed to perfecting the throw so that he doesn't have to move his feet. I prefer to not move unless I want to move rather than being forced to move by an accurate throw. So the rules favor perfect throws, not perfect corrections by moving your body where it shouldn't have to go. So there's another incomplete connection, a half shower, then a basic throw followed by a five up 360. Again, a half shower is a one-handed move. So to connect a half shower to a five up 360, the five up 360 has to start with the hand opposite from the hand throwing, the half shower throws, meaning the hand that's turning the ring parallel to front. Now the rings he's using are actually a different material. Those are ABS rings. It's a harder plastic, which does make some of these pancakes throw slightly easier, but man, they're brutal on the hands. More painful. The gloves would not help you with no. these ones. Here's, There's the back yeah. one. That's it. Look how high he's catching those, though. He's, his hand is way up there, almost yeah. above his head. He has a unique style. I mean, it's it's one of these jugglers who you it looks like he hasn't spent as much time on YouTube as some jugglers. Does it his own way. Yeah. Really insisting on getting those pancake throws, yeah. which he finally did get there. Yep. Now, six rings. Sergey normally doesn't do six rings. He doesn't like it. He likes crossing, uh, but he's doing this just for the points here, connecting sync pattern to async. And then if you could see this from the front, they'd probably be angled to the other side and he's just forcing and he's them just to forcing stay. Him back. Yeah. Now he's back in his comfort zone here with seven rings. There's and that. And he's there. pleased. No there worries. Nice. That's great stuff. So here's those uh, one handed shoulder throws. Right. He does walk a little bit. Catching them really high, but uh, back in the pattern. Yeah, a lot of moving of the feet there. Here comes the five. Okay, so here's his pancake throws. Now he's gonna connect to a half shower. Which, which is a valid connection, really nice. Would have been nicer if that uh, that basic throw would have stayed a pancake throw. Yeah, was, yeah. that would have been a nice Same connection. Thing. Well, aside from a few problems, Sergey scores a 9.4, putting him in first place for the advanced ring competition. However, Sergey isn't competing in any of the other advanced competitions, so he's not really in contention for the overall championship but uh, he did make it harder for some of the other ring competitors to score higher. But yes, as far as rings go, Sergey won that competition. Well, now we must segue from Sergey. We're done with the rings, and we're moving on to the no, advanced let's, let's ball competition, starting oh, with Thomas Dietz. Then, oh, okay.
Pilot nice. 360 qualifies a pattern. Yeah. Into a half shower in the same run. That proves he can count. He did the six up multiplex, he made sure to get enough catches of the cascade after that and locked in the points for the six up multiplex. A little bouncy. Yeah, no, you don't like the bouncy, do you? No, uh, it's just not necessary. Oh, it, uh, oh. Tried to connect to 8x6 from the six up multiplex, which he would have then uh, had to qualify by going back into the cascade, uh, but dropped before he got a chance. 8x6 360. Didn't, uh, nice. didn't qualify the pattern though, he doesn't get points for that. All 360s, you have to qualify the pattern. He didn't make 14 catches after that. Oh, look how clean has, that is. But didn't qualify the pattern before oh, the multiplex yeah. collect. Yeah. Didn't qualify again after that one. And uh, He does didn't. not like that ball. No. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get points for anything he tried there, by the way. Oh, he didn't qualify those patterns. that is unfortunate. Patterns. Wow. Yeah. You got to learn how to count if you're going to be in these competitions. You who gotta wrote, qualify. Who wrote these rules? Uh, I don't know, but uh, the point is that uh, the rules are posted, you can read them, and uh, <laughs> you should know what a qualifying pattern consists of. If it's I seven see. balls, it's 14 catches. This is all good here. This is, well, oh, oh. oh all right. Keeps it off the ground, at least. Yeah. When they're pink, it's easier to keep track of them. Uh, that's actually six balls that looks like seven sometimes, uh, just with the hole there. The fascinating thing is, he's not making any of this up. It looks like it's just the spontaneous assortment of patterns, but every throw is preconceived and uh, Even and though he's rehearsed. walking all the way around the stage to catch them, which gives it a, an authentic look of being created on the spot. Right. This is planned in advance. Uh, not the drops, I don't think. I doubt he planned any of those. That was a nice connection. That was a uh, B97531 into a, a half shower, although his uh, first half shower throw was uh, more of a seven ball pattern than an actual, you know, arcing half shower throw. He looks happy. Yeah, he would not have done that with silicone balls, I don't think. <laughs> that would have, people would not have made it through that alive. No. Not a bad routine though. No five ball moves at all. All right, here, here's that connection that I was talking about. So this is 8x6, uh, 360, then two, four, six, eight throws, and that's it. You gotta have 14 to qualify the pattern after 360 with seven balls. Apparently he's not aware of that and he's happy. He is happy. He's not going to be as happy when he realizes the score. Here's another failed connection. Um, so this is one high, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that's it. You have to qualify the pattern after the multiplex. You also have to qualify after a site swap pattern. If it's not continuous, if you're not qualifying the pattern in the site swap, you have to qualify the next pattern after it. So like, clearly he can do the tricks, but just some bad decisions on... Uh... Sometimes competitors stop early because the pattern is, is shaky and they don't want to drop, not realizing not that case. if they stop, no. It, it seemed like he could have kept going, he just uh, wasn't counting. And I've seen him sometimes use one different colored ball and he said that helps him to count. But I really think if you're learning how to juggle, you should know how to count and be able to count the catches as you're juggling. Probably the only competitor to omit five balls from his routine entirely, he only did six and seven ball moves, and his score reflects that, receiving a 15.5. That is going to be hard to beat. We'll be back with more from the 2008 World Juggling Federation Championships after this. Welcome back to the 2008 World Juggling Federation Championships. And back after a three-year competition hiatus oh, is right. Chris okay. Fowler <laughs> from Raleigh, North Carolina. 24 years old. So let's see, uh, he's taken a rather long hiatus. Let's see uh, how he's improved over the past few years. Now if Chris is doing five balls, starting off with five ball routine, some nice connections into a six X four. Trying to connect four nine, seven, five, three, one patterns. All right, so like we've seen in other routines, once they have a, uh, a first drop, a lot more drops seem to come after that now. 
you know, I've done this before, and that first drop makes you nervous. But, yeah. Oh, I have one drop, and uh, you know, another drop is just so yeah, much that feeling worse. Feeling of I can't have any more. And yeah. Then... You have to just kind of move on and focus to uh, what's happening now, and, and not dwell in the past. Is he chewing gum? Uh, either that, or he's not going to have much of his lip left at the end of this routine. Hmm. Then I hope it's gum. Vova has that problem too. You'll see him when it gets really strenuous, he chews his whole mouth. He does. Like a horse chewing a uh, cud. I look forward to that. Oh, hi, low. That's Oh, that was a nice, uh, would have been a nice transition. A, uh, a five ball shower, five up 360 in a shower pattern, but then into a cascade. Trying to decide if he's going to do it again, I think. No, moving on to six balls. That is uh, eight, four, eight, four. Both hands throwing simultaneously, one an eight ball pattern, one a four ball pattern. Uh, right about now, I think he's ceased to be having fun. That's where the panic sets in. Doesn't look angry, though. No. No, no, still. Uh, no, now he looks Disappointed, angry. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would get angry. That works for me. Yeah, at this point, uh, you're just going, what? what is going and on? And it's frustrating, because you know he can do these moves, so you know we all want to see him. You, you get to the point if the nerves get to you, you just can't do anything anymore. It's, nothing works for you, and you're, you're just amazed by it, actually, because you remember in practice how this stuff works, and then uh, what can I do? You know, cycling through your routine in your head, what, what should I move on to next that, that will work? And you're thinking, please, somebody say time. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out well for me. Moves the gum over to the right side of his mouth, then gets another ball. 8x6. Well, 8x negative 6, I guess, in that case, because it went straight down. Oh, oh. Multiple errors there, collisions, drops, and uh, uh, too bad. I think he swallowed his gum. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Two connected six up multiplex patterns connected to a qualifying run of the cascade. Uh, so it's, there's the uh, three up, three up 720 into uh, 744. That was a great combination. Into an over and back double 180, back in the cascade. Now you have to qualify the pattern after that, which he does. And uh, six ball overheads. Notice the, uh, the elbows pointed out in front instead of the side, which is still valid, just a little different from uh, some of the other competitors. Chris Fowler scores a 6.0. And next up is John Brady, a first-time WJF competitor. John Brady starting off with the uh, passing zone pretzel. Yeah. That's my favorite. Is that what it's called now? Yeah. Yeah. Very clean 5-up 360. Yeah, this guy has really smooth, tight patterns. A really nice half shower variation. Pay attention also to how, how little he moves his feet. I mean, the, the balls really just come right back to him. You, you might see a slight step to the right or the left, but he always comes back. He's not running around the stage. His head is always tilted a little bit to one side, almost as though he's listening to the pattern. I think he's just trying to balance us out after watching Thomas. He has such a fluid juggling style. It's very enjoyable to watch. Yeah, I don't feel nervous. Uh, I don't feel nervous watching him at all. It, just, right. it seems like everything's just getting sucked yeah. right back into his hands. You just know it's going to work. Now, this is a nice pattern. I haven't yeah, seen this before. I yeah. like that one. Not a lot of reaching going on, is there? No, no it's, that's what I'm talking about. His hands stay in the same place. The, the balls just go right back to them. That's what I always try to teach people is make the balls go to you. You don't go to them. Well, you taught him well. <laughs> oh, oh, that was someone That's just what I teach people. This is the end result. This is what you want your juggling to look like. Yeah. You know, if I had to choose between having to run all over the stage to keep the patterns going or standing in one spot and making perfect throws, 
I would gladly choose John Brady's technique over Thomas's. Look at that flawless 966 and qualifies the pattern after. He will. Oh, oh well, he will. Uh, he will qualify the patterns. I believe he can count. Very nice so half just, shower. Wow. Yeah. It's really an effortless seven ball pattern, and that's why he's able to run it for so long. He's not wasting any energy correcting bad throws or repositioning. That can tire you out quick, but a perfect pattern where the balls come right back to you is the most energy efficient pattern to maintain and really demonstrates perfect technique. Five after L, another, yeah. this is what, two drops Two in. drops in, that's that's no. not so bad. Not bad, he's at the end of his time almost. He's gonna try drops. this again? It's even more stressful when the music runs out too because you can hear the drops, but. Oh, yeah, he qualifies it nicely. A couple more than a qualify. Look at that. There you have it. That was a beautiful, beautiful On set. the finger point. And so there's that half shower pattern that, uh, I'm not sure if this is incredibly difficult, but it just looks really cool. I've never yeah, seen it before. Yeah, it's a really nice variation. Here's another version of that. It's uh, it's like a yeah. one-sided 744. Uh, it's not a 744. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a seven, but uh, who cares? It looks nice. <laughs> sure is pretty. <laughs> and here's that five up 360 back in the seven. Look at how little his feet moved after that 360. So that 360 was set up perfect. He just came around and just resumed the pattern like he didn't even do a 360 in the first place. Really well done. John Brady scores a 4.5. A relatively clean routine, very nice patterns, but without a significant amount of six and seven ball moves, it's just not possible to get past 10 points. And up next is Arash Farhang, his first year competing in the advanced ball competition. Arash uh, dropping his balls right when his music started. That might have uh, rushed him a little bit there because uh, might have been some miscommunication with the, uh, the sound cue, but uh, either way, he's doing seven balls now. A pretty devastating collision, though. Got it. He has an interesting posture. It seems as if he's catching the balls higher than yeah, up than by normal. his shoulders. Yeah, yeah his, his hands do seem a little bit higher when he's making the catches. Moving on to a sync pattern, going for double qualify points. Going into a half shower, then nine five five five. Six balls not being very nice to him this year. All right, down to the uh, the five ball routine. That's a strategy you're starting to see now. Is uh, starting with the higher numbers because they take more energy, and then uh, going to the five ball routine at the end. And probably you have fewer tricks that you can do with the bigger numbers anyway. So sometimes these longer routines with five balls can. Yeah, they can wear you out fast, so moving on to a seven ball routine after being worn down with a long five ball sequence can be a little too much. But using your power at the beginning for the six and seven ball moves manages your strength better, and then you can recover a little and move on to the five ball routines easier. That's a, a lovely combination yeah, really there. Yeah, nice. Arash has come up with some new uh, side swap combinations uh, for this year, and I don't have them memorized yet. <laughs> uh, another 540. That makes me dizzy looking at that. Yeah, he's the 540 guy, isn't he? He is. It yeah. looks so smooth, but it's, yeah, it's such yeah. an it's unnatural. It's very underutilized by people. It's hard to do. Yeah, it really is. Mine kind of looked like a uh, 360 and then a 180. Right. Okay, I know how to get around here, and now just halfway what I just did. Okay. I do a 720 and then back one. Uh, half. <laughs> Now it's a two-stage 540. Five up, two-stage 540. <laughs> Wonderful. Five up, 180, connected to a three up, 540. Well, that should be no problem for him. So. That used to be hard for uh, for people. It uh, doesn't look hard for them anymore. It's still hard for some people. Oh, the passing zone pretzel. Oh, <laughs> having trouble with the passing zone pretzel. <laughs> well, ran out of time there. 
And I think he qualified the passing zone pretzel, but he might have been going for bonus points on that one. We promise we didn't tell Jason to call it that. So that's a 6-4-X connected to a 6-X-4-3-up-540 connected to a 6-X-4-6-X-4-X, which is basically just 6-X-4, only two sets on each side before switching direction. And there's that 5-up-2 stage 540. Arash Farhang scores a 6.6, placing him ahead of Chris Fowler and John Brady. We'll be back with more from the 2008 World Juggling Federation Championships after this. Welcome back to the 2008 World Juggling Federation Championships. And now once again is Toby Walker. Now he's starting off with that, uh, that big head bouncing ball again, doing six balls and then going to the head bounce. And does this count as a six ball trick? That's a six ball only if you go from a six ball pattern to the bounce and then back. Which Got it. That's why he did it in that order. And he qualifies it. Yeah. Uh, although you may see Toby is not uh, one of the best counters of qualification, so we may see some incomplete uh, moves with him as well. He's, he's done this in Say the past many times. So. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's, it's really frustrating to see a perfect pattern just end a few catches too early. And his 360s are really 355s pretty much every time, right? <laughs> he doesn't quite get around all the way. Uh, but he always eventually, that, uh, that five comes around. degrees happens. Yeah. He comes around. And he makes Not. up for it later. Toby is very creative. Yeah, he's one of these guys who's technically superb, but really has some unusual, unique ideas. And he's able to, to combine his, uh, his high level of technique with original moves, so not everyone like, can serve. Like that right there. Yeah. Then that's Five, a perfect nine, example. Seven. He didn't qualify the pattern, though, after that uh, ass catch there. You, uh, you have to qualify the pattern after these moves. It sounds mean to take these points away from them, but they, uh, you've got to read the rules and understand them. And just put in a couple of more catches of the five ball pattern and you got it. And that's there so that you demonstrate that you have control over the pattern. 8844. Four. Going for uh, overhead throw, something that Chris Fowler did. His elbows are a little bit more out to the side, which I think is a more appealing... Uh... Yeah, his were somewhere in between, pointed forward and straight out to the side. They were closer to out to the side, though. But uh, aesthetically, I think it looks nicer to have them uh, straight out so that your arms are parallel to the front. Yeah. The man can juggle seven balls. Oh, oh. oh. Nice. Uh, well, for a while at least. Oh. oh, that's too bad. Nice explosion, though. It's hard to get all those balls to hit each other at the yeah. same time. <laughs> yeah. There's that multiplex move again that Thomas didn't qualify. And Toby doesn't qualify it either. Just one throw short of a qualify. Six up multiplex back into the pattern, and you have to qualify the pattern after that, which he did not. Yeah, he certainly could have qualified that. There was no problem, yeah, it, problem uh, with he, the pattern he wasn't at having all. Trouble. Counting errors. Eight x six. Oh, nice. Oh, Connected to a half shot. Beautiful. Yeah. And that was qualified. There, he gets points for all. Of that it. seemed effortless. I haven't seen that transition before. No, that was a, that was a new. You see it wow, now that you great. see it, it's an obvious one. But uh, no one's ever done it before. Had a few drops in there, but he's got to be pretty happy with that routine. And one of the better endings uh, that we've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, ending strong with a very very difficult connection. All right, there's that uh, into the head bounce and back into six. Wastes no time. Okay, and here's that blind catch. So here we go. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six yeah. throws, four short of oh, qualifying the pattern. That's disappointing. And five balls is not hard to do, so it's right. just a counting error. Here's that transition again. Watch carefully. Yeah, right into oh, the half shot. Just effortless. Both moves are really hard. And yes. to connect, that's a high scoring connection move there. You get points for both moves, and then the connection as well is the value of both moves divided by two. And he did it very cleanly. 
Toby Walker scores a 7.9, placing him ahead of everyone except Thomas Dietz. And up next is Vova Galchenko from Pinza, Russia. Now, a few years ago, Vova told me he'd almost never juggled balls or, or just doesn't practice anymore. Apparently, that must have changed. He started his first competition with uh, in the ball division in 2006. Okay. And uh, one thing that's interesting, I notice the balls he's using now, he just switched from bean bags to balls uh, within the past couple of months. Really? Which generally isn't a good idea to do no. just before you compete. Uh, but we'll see how it uh, Unless how it goes. you're Vova. Yeah. Bang. Vova always said it doesn't matter uh, what you juggle as long as you know how to juggle. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, but I think that's what I get out of it. So far, a fairly clean routine. Right? Yeah. He's color coordinated his uh, attire. Yeah. His uh, red outfit with the uh, puke orange colored balls. That's a 75751 five, connected to a 5 up 360 connected to a 97531. Four in a wow. row. Four in a row. Still going strong, no drops. Oh, a nice three up 720, very clean. Nice wide shot there of the lights in case you were wondering what was illuminating the competitors. I knew it was going to be lights. <laughs> I didn't want to give it away though. High low shower pattern into a three up shower pattern 360, right into a high middle low pattern. Back into the shower pattern. He doesn't bounce very much in his shower pattern, does he? No, he all, of rock his, solid. all of his throws just come from the arms, which again, for me, aesthetically looks best. I like to see as little unnecessary movement as possible. He looks relaxed today. Well, he hasn't dropped yet. Uh, uh, you know, not dropping can relax you, and some people it can make them more nervous because then they're wondering, when am I going to drop? But so far, he's doing some very difficult six ball side swaps and connections into oh, 360s. Oh, that was a drop, but after a very difficult and very high-scoring six-ball routine. Now, can you shout out the names of all these, Jason? I can. <laughs> I, I don't. These are advanced I don't think, You know what? I don't have names. Computers don't count this high. You all have to understand that we started juggling before side swaps were invented. We don't know what these things are called unless we look at the papers that we don't have in front of us that the judges do. So just rest assured, the judges know what's going on and they're scoring accordingly. The rest uh, of us can watch and be amazed. We're just waiting for them to drop so that we can say something mean about them. <laughs> I just want to say nice things about Volva, though. You know, he, he's always so serious when he's juggling, but it is funny when he's off stage and not juggling. He's a very funny guy. Nice clean seven ball uh, run. Probably uh, planning some moves, but ran out of time. Ran out of time there. Probably saved him some drops there, though. So that's that's good. Ended with a strong seven ball run. Okay, so this is an eight x six four six x pattern into a four up three sixty. And there's that B97531 connected right into 864. And then right into a 4 up Async 360. Vova Galchenko scores an 8.3, earning him second place. So the final advanced ball competition standings place Toby Walker in third place. Vova Galchenko in second place, and Thomas Dietz in first place. And that's all the time we have for now, but be sure not to miss the conclusion of the 2008 WJF Overall Championship. Check your local listings for air times. From the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm Owen Morse. I'm John Wee. And I'm the one who created this mess, Jason Garfield. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>